Order. Order, there's been enough of that exchange. I've called Tororoa Flavel and I expect the House to show him some courtesy. Tororoa Flavel. Tēnāko, Mr. Speaker. Kia ora tātai o te whare. Ko taku pātai ko te mini te tuarua mō ngā take hauora. He ahanga rautaki ka kō kuhua ki te whakautu i te pikinga mā te Rua Te Kaumā Rima Ōrau o ngā kiritaki hei whakararu nei i ngā ratonga aukati Peti Moni o tira tērā pikihanga e Rima Mano toru rau Rua Te Kaumā Rima i te tau Rua Mano Māwaru ki te ono mano, ono rau Peti Te Kaumā Toru i te tau Rua Mano Māiwa a ka whakai aia ki tā Barbara Phillips kai whakahare no te manatū haora i kira those seeking help are only a small proportion of overall gambling prevalence. Mr. Speaker, Peter Dunn. Mr. Speaker, the government recently approved a new six-year strategy for the period 2010 to 2016 and a funding plan for the period 2010 to 2013, including a comprehensive needs analysis based on client user statistics such as the ones the member has quoted, prevalence data and models of best practice. The three-year service plan continues to provide for a range of services from public health activity through to brief and comprehensive interventions. For communities that do not have access to face-to-face services, the toll-free gambling helpline service is now available 24 hours, seven days a week. Mr Speaker, typically clients present to services in crisis, which is a smaller percentage of those who are affected by problem gambling. The government has therefore strengthened its focus on early interventions in order to reach people before they reach that crisis point. Supplementary. To Rolf Lovell. Ki te minita, ko wānanga hia e te minita o te haura, ngā painga o te tui tui e te kāri whai pūtea, a me te kāri whakatū whakapaunga pūtea, ki te rautaki whakakore peti peti, ki te kore pūtea. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I, think, the Honourable Peter I think a more logical comparison would be to look at data from the same quarter of previous years and an analysis of Department of Internal Affairs data shows that there continues to be a decline in spend in the non-casino uh, gaming machine sector. For example, in September 2008, the sector spend was $232.3 million, this fell to $220.7 million for the September 2009 quarter and fell in the September 2010 quarter to $215.2 million. Mr Speaker, I think that they provide the answers to the member's question. Tauroa Flavo. Ki te minita, he a wanga wanga ona e pāna ki te tatauranga e ki nei, ahakoa ko mimiti te tokomaha o ngā raihana, ngā mihini peti peti, me ngā whare peti peti i te tau ko hipa, ko piki tonu te pūtea, ko whakapaurie e te haufā tau, ko taha ake nei, mai i te rua rau mā iwa miriona tāra i te pipiri, ki te rua rau te kau mā rima miriona tāra i te here tūri kōka, a hea hanga ara kai mo i te tangata, a ki te whai, a ki te whai whai hāre i tēnei ngā, ki te whai whai. Ki te whawhai i tēnei ngāngara te peti peti. Mr Speaker, Peter Dunn. Mr Speaker, the issue that the member raises really falls within the responsibility of the Department of Internal Affairs, but I am aware that we already have systems that interrupt play on pokey machines that are known as pop-ups or player information displays, and I gather that there are some Australian states proposing to implement technology such as pre-commit cards and I would imagine that the Minister of Internal Affairs would want to see the outcome of that um, move before determining whether to further regulate the sector in New Zealand. Question number five, the Honourable Annette King.